Do you think Amaru and Cav are good operators? Do you play Ash every now and then? Do you think rushing is good and that shields are overrated or not even good at all for that matter? Well, if you answered yes to any of these questions, this video was made for you. And if you didn't, well, there's still a bunch of R6 theory in this video that if you implement into your gameplay, it will guarantee an improvement in your rank. Enjoy the video. Okay, guys, we're talking about utility. That is what we have to talk about because I personally feel like people don't know how to use their utility properly. People think that it's better to just rush or like try to kill everyone than it is to actually play control and play utility. Um, which, you know, I don't blame you because it is something that is a little more advanced. It is a little more difficult to learn, but you got to learn how to use your utility properly if you want to actually be good at the game. The first thing I want to just like talk about is droning because drones are utility. Droning is utility. Let's, uh, I'll give you an example of how to drone properly because some of y'all need it. And I'm not going to lie. Some of, some of the people in my rank need this as well. So don't feel alone. Don't feel alone. So first of all, let's talk about if I'm droning my teammate into somewhere. So we want to enter the map. This is like, let's say it's a basement defense and we want to take open area so that we can get the hatches open and clear the utility on site and then go for a plant. Ideally, that is what you are trying to do. So if I'm trying to drone this, rather than doing this, which is what everyone does, just sprinting my drone in and jumping it everywhere and it getting shot and being like, oh, there's a guy in there. This is, this is how I would prefer you to drone it. And this is a better way of droning it. So maybe you quick peek the drone hole to see if anybody's watching the drone hole. That way, if they are watching the drone hole, you don't get your drone shot. You're not losing your drone right away. So let's say there's nobody there. We're droning up. Rather than just jumping my drone here, being super loud, et cetera, et cetera, I'm going to kind of quick peek it around doorways. That way, if they're not looking around right at the ground, they're not going to hear my drone. It's, it's a lot quieter this way, right? And that way, the info stays alive. So if my drone gets shot, I'm calling this guy out. So say he's here and he shoots my drone. He could then move anywhere in the room to a new spot to actually kill my teammate. So by keeping the drone alive, I can actively continue call this guy on the ping. I can say he's behind this desk. He's still behind this desk. If he crosses, I can call that he crosses. I can continuously call where he is. So that way the information is always actually correct. Rather than it getting shot, my teammate going in two seconds later and the guy's in an entirely different spot because that guy could move very quickly, right? Um, so that's, that's in the case that somebody actually um is droning in somebody else which that requires good communication that can be tougher at lower ranks but that's something that pretty much most high rank people will do is drone each other in so that's that's step one now let's say my teammates aren't listening to me they don't want to come take this room and i'm kind of stuck here by myself right you still want to kind of do the same thing but rather than Rather than me calling out where the guy is, I, I it's even more important, arguably, that I keep this drone alive. Because if he shoots it, I'm coming in later behind the drone than a teammate would be. So by getting this into a spot where I can see enough, but it doesn't get shot, I can then see this guy's crouched over here. And if he doesn't realize that I've droned him, he's probably not going to move. So I can see this guy's crouched over here. Maybe I go in off a nade, the sound to cover, and then I know he's behind here and maybe I get the kill. But if he shoots my drone, I'm going in, checking every corner, hoping that I don't get smoked. And maybe the guy's like prone here with a shotgun at that point. I don't know. That's just an example. But keeping your drone alive while you're droning is going to make you just infinitely better. You will get so many free kills this way. It's just, it's kind of ridiculous that, that people just drive their drone in and sacrifice it to the Rainbow Six Gods just to get absolutely smoked. Okay, so that's that's droning, droning yourself or droning teammates, right? Now, the other thing you can do with drones is you can hold space with drones. So what that means is you can watch flanks with drones better. better there's better. I know, obviously, it sounds pretty obvious that you can watch a flank with a drone. But you can, you can hold space with drones to actually result in kills rather than resulting in be killed. So let's take Lobby on Bank, for example. So if I do this epic parkour, which this drone is nasty, a lot of some people will shoot it, a lot of people won't. Um, I can see all of Lobby and Banana and even into Trump a bit behind the teller's desk. I can see a lot with this drone, right? So this is a way that a single player on your team can make an absolutely massive impact. If I'm holding this space with this drone, I'm just gonna 
what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit here on the drone. I'm not going to peek anything. I'm just going to sit here and wait. And maybe I wait here for like a minute and a half. Maybe my team's pushing something else, whatever. I'm just sitting here and waiting, hoping my other teammates, teammates are actually getting something done. So let's say my teammates are actually doing their thing, whatever. And then the other team just thinks lobby's clear because our team's just not pushing lobby. So the other team might just walk down the stairs into the middle of the open. And that's the case where I would get off my drone and shoot this guy in the side of the head because he doesn't know I'm here. I'm not making any noise. Um, I haven't maybe even shot the default camera. They probably just assuming it's clear. Maybe they're coming into lobby, like shoot my teammates off the rappel. So rather than me sitting in lobby in the middle of the open and them actually checking the spots I might be, I'm just getting off my drone and shooting them in the back, making it a zero risk gunfight that will just give me free kills. Or if they're in these double windows and I can see them on my drone, I can come here like this and I can shoot them through here. Sorry, sorry, this window. And I can shoot them in the side of the head. There was a clip of me solo queuing on stream where I killed three people by just doing this exact thing. So drones are super, super underrated. And droning well is going to just make you 10 times better. It just seems, I don't know, maybe it's, is it just me? It just seems obvious, but people think it's obvious, but then don't do it at the same time. It's kind of weird. This is another reason why if you are on defense in the prep phase, if you're, if you're a roamer or you're going to get hatches or you're just doing general stuff on defense setting up, this is why it's really, really important that you drone hunt. So like actually look for where the attackers may have pre-placed drones and look for spots where drones like me. So like you see the one on the light there, maybe you go and shoot that. Maybe you check up here on the other lights. You check in the couch, the crevices, all the cracks and things. Now, you only have so much time while you're setting up to do this, but drone hunting can be really, really strong because not only can you start limiting the amount of drones the attackers have, but it also wastes more time because then they have to redrone that area. So let's say my team in prep phase gets a drone up here in open area right which this is also a really nice drone I've, I've a bunch of people use this one it's pretty hidden so if the attackers don't find or if the defenders don't find this maybe i just see a guy go crouch behind you off the spawn maybe maybe we see that it's clear i'm like okay you can just take open right off the start my team just comes comes in and we're good to go so we save a lot of time that way with the pre-placed drone so that's why looking for them on the defense is very important very strong if you want want to have an easier time on the defense because if that drone gets shot, we then have to redrone the entire room again. Now, the other thing you can do is if your drone economy is bad or you guys are getting smoked trying to drone things, you can use Yana clones to drone your teammates. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, hey, follow up my clone. My teammate's going to hop in behind me. And what this looks like to a defender is two people running in. So then they have to, the defender has to shoot both. But if your teammate has good aim, he can play the, the trade off your clone. So the defender shoots your clone the attacker trades the clone and shoots the defender and you end up with a free kill and it's also just a very fast way to clear stuff um now i did this on tiktok where i showed this bait where you go on your clone you get off of it and right now i'm a real person i can shoot back etc so this is a good way to bait defenders and a lot of people what they replied with was well i'm in silver i'm in gold they're just going to put a whole mag into the clone so that's when you want to not bait and get your teammate to follow your clone because you will just absolutely smoke everybody that way. So that's those, those are like the drone droning essentials, I would say. Um, and Yana is super, super strong right now. She has two nades, gone six, which is an absolutely great pick. So run Yana if you suck. As long as you use the clones, then you're good to go. What is pre-placing drones? Because I am Silver who saw your TikTok. Yes. So pre-placing drones is driving your drone into the building in prep phase and getting into an area to actually see stuff. I know it's a sarcastic comic, but some people might actually not know, to be fair. Oh, that's another thing, actually, is you can, once you're in the building and you need to set, like, flank drones or, or put drones somewhere, you can toss them onto areas that you wouldn't be able to normally jump to, and you can get some crazy flank drones by doing it that way. When should you pick up your drone after prep phase? Um, you can pick your drone up either once you have gotten the control already. So say you use a drone to clear a room, you've taken the room, you can then pick it up after so you can use it again later. Um, or pick it up off spawn if you're not going to drive it into the building. You don't always have to pre-place drones. Like a lot of time you do want to just save them, especially if you're solo queuing, saving your drone is really, really strong because, um, you only have two and a lot of the time your teammates won't drone stuff that you ask for. So making sure you have the drones to actually use for yourself is, is super important. 
which is also why you should pick them up off spawn or play Yana. Like I've been playing tons of Yana solo queuing. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Let's talk about shields. Shields are just literally the best utility. Ever since they add the slits in them, shields are basically just mirror windows that you can put anywhere. And I'm gonna show you why shields are so strong. So a lot of people just don't play them. The first thing I wanna say about shields is if you have a shield to play, play behind it because otherwise the shield is useless. Let's say I put my shield here on defense, right? So I can then watch the kitchen door. If an attacker tries to walk in the kitchen door, I can pre-fire off the slits of the shield or peek off the sides to kill the guy trying to walk in the door. If he's holding an angle on the door, I can do the same thing. I can see his head through the slit. I can pre-fire, etc. I can peek off the right. I can peek off the left. Well, with this one, you can't really peek off the left. Normally, you'd be able to peek off the left. I can peek off you know, the bomb angle maybe if I want. If I see him like this, I can peek behind the bomb for more cover. So the attacker coming into this has to then try to either pre-fire the, the left, the top, wherever I may be peeking it from. So they have a lot more kind of angles to watch and I'm pre-firing at the same time. So they're, they're just in a really bad situation pushing into a shield like this. So that's why if attackers don't clear your shield, you just need to play it so that you can abuse the fact that they're not clearing it. Because with this one shield alone, not only can I stop the walk-in, Wow, that was that was just a garbage smoke. But I can smoke off the plant on kitchen window and shoot people coming in in this door. So if if I'm smoke here and it's late in the round and the attackers are pushing from kitchen, I'm gonna say, guys, I have kitchen. Like they, they these guys cannot push into kitchen with me here. You guys just have to watch my back. So as long as my teammates are making sure they don't come through bathroom or service, we're pretty much guaranteed to win the round unless I somehow whiff on these guys running in. But this is even like even stronger with like a Malusi here or Barbar or whatever because it slows them down as they're pushing in, so it makes it even easier to pre-fire them. But that's just one example of why shields are so good. It's the same thing on the hookah bomb site. So if my shield is on vase, this is where you would put the shield normally for hookah. They can now no longer walk into hookah because if they try to run in this door, I will pre-fire them off the shield. And this is a situation where I can peek left, right, middle, and they're not going to know, or I could even throw my smokes from behind here right now ideally you have a little more space behind the shield and it's not backed up this far because that way i could actually throw my smokes over here i'll show you so if the shield's like this i can safely sit behind the shield and throw it over to smoke off the door right now right or if i'm nitroing if i have a nitro if i'm like another operator who's playing behind the shield with a nitro then i can sit here and hold my nitro when they walk in the door i nitro it so shields are just very versatile and very very strong and I, like I, people people just don't play them right. Um, so play the shields right because they are very very overpowered. On the other hand side of things, if I'm an attacker, so now that you know the defense is using the shield to stop the hookah pushing, if I'm an attacker and I break this shield, what am I left with? So let's just pretend the site is is hookah for now, just for this example. But if, if, if my shield gets broken, right, if they nade my shield, they clear my shield, especially early in the round, I then have to expose myself to get info on this doorway. So now I don't have the I don't have the protection of the shield to constantly have the info on the doorway, which means I have to actually peek into the open and expose myself to the doorway to get information on if there's attackers out there rather than having the nice, warm comfort of my shield. It doesn't seem like a lot by just clearing this, but it actually adds way more pressure to the defense than you would think. The same way if I have a Malusi on Cool Vibes and a Malusi on Vase and a Malusi over here. Now, I don't have to watch any of those. I don't have to watch any of those with those Malusis because if the attackers push up to the Malusi, it will make a very loud sound cue and I will then know there's an attacker there. But if the attackers say they cleared every single Malusi before they tried to run into sight or before they went for a plant or whatever, I then have to worry about the hallway because I don't know. There might be a guy that walks down here. I have no info on anymore. I, a guy could come up cool vibes. I don't know. We don't have the Malusi anymore. But say they don't clear this one and they don't clear this one. Then my team knows like, okay, they're all coming from either Aqua or the Hookah Balk. And then we only have to watch two ways rather than five ways. Or sorry, one, two, three, four, four ways, I guess. Um, so trying to clear as much stuff as you can before your team actually goes into push stuff is going to make everything way easier and and it doesn't seem like it from an attacker's perspective but from a defender's perspective 
you aren't sure what's going on and that uncertainty is what leads the attackers to winning the round with all that said this is why flores is really really good uh especially if mute isn't banned so like with with this site specifically if i'm playing flores i'm gonna maybe drive a drone in through here maybe this one's muted so i'm saying okay well i can use the vent to drive my drone and actually clear this shield or i can use my flores drones to clear the malusi on cool vibes or on vase or on billiards um so with flores you can clear a bunch of stuff and add all this pressure with just a single operator which is why flores is also uh really really strong the last thing about um defender utility i kind of want to talk about is uh barbed wire placement which i know i'm smoke right now so i don't actually have barbed wire but a lot of people will put barbed wire at like the bottom of the stairs now this is not ideal because and this goes for like pretty much every staircase if you put it right at the bottom the defenders can just hit it or the, sorry the attackers can just hit it and clear it without actually exposing themselves whereas if i was a defender and i put the barbed wire right here and it kind of hangs down the stairs a bit as an attacker i have to walk up here to melee it now but now i have to be worried about somebody on top of cool vibes waiting for me to do that to shock on me in the top of the head as soon as they hear the barbed wire punch right so pushing the barbed wire up the stairs and making it so the attackers are in a vulnerable spot to actually hit it is just a much better way to actually place the barbed wire. Let's say I'm putting barbed wire on the VIP door so that way if they push up the hallway, I'll know. Rather than putting the barbed wire like in the doorway or here where they can just simply hit it from back here, I'm going to put it like in the hallway a bit. That way they kind of have to reach out around the doorway to melee it. And then they're exposing themselves to these angles just to just to punch the barbed wire. Either that or they have to waste an explosive on it, which is always good to like make the attackers waste explosive stuff on stuff on utility. That way they're nading the utility instead of nading you kind of thing. Um, but yeah, that's my defense utility tips for you. Barbed wire is also really good under windows where they have to actually vault in. That's the other thing. Oh, yes. Let's talk about Amaru. I'm going to show you why you should either one stop playing amaru or two go watch my amaru guide on youtube and learn to play amaru properly i don't think i've ever seen somebody use amaru like well in ranked it's just if you're going to amaru you're either not using her ability and running the g8 or you're just rushing and maybe maybe either going one for one killing four people or dying instantly which is the most common of the three but i want to kind of explain why Amaru, even if you get a kill with Amaru, it's still not ideal. It's not ideal to go in with Amaru, get one kill and die, and say, I got my frag. Because you are just, like, logically, you are just hurting your team. Right, okay. As a defense, what are you doing? You have five operators who all five would have utility for the most part, right? that they are placing down in prep phase or setting them in prep phase, you know, putting down your ADSs, putting down your barbed wire, putting down your frost mats, putting putting down your cage claws, your bandits, your mutes, etc. right? So if I go in with Amaru and I fucking fly up through the hatch, I run in the front door and the first 10 seconds come in here and I'm like, oh, let's go, let's go, baby, right? Which honestly, this isn't a half ad rush, rush path. If you do want to rush with Amaru, this is kind of a nice one. I, I kind of like it. But um, let's say I go in and oh here's jaeger running out the door i shoot jaeger in the head i come in i'm looking for more and then i die to red right so now my team's in a 4v4 i'm dead but i killed jaeger right it's a 4v4 like that's good right no that's not good that's not good that's bad because now what's happened is not only have i used no utility at all but jaeger has already placed down his barbed wire and his ADSs. he's already used all his utility all jaeger had left was to like Maybe shoot some more drones and like and kill a couple attackers. So I've died with two drones, leaving my team with eight drones instead of ten. Maybe two hard breach chargers or three flashbangs. So Jaeger's placed down three ADSs, placed down two barbed wire, got rid of two drones, got rid of got rid of three flashbangs or two hard hard breach chargers. Balancing it all out, my team is left with much less utility while the other team still has all their utility. If that makes sense. So really, Amaru rushing is only benefiting you if you kill two people, or maybe if I go in and I kill the smoke. Like, what are the odds I kill the smoke out of all the people when I rush? 20%, you know, one in five. Um, so so rushing with Amaru is pointless. In my opinion, it's just pointless. And everyone's like, oh, Amaru's so good, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, she's got a good gun, 
but she's a lot better if you wait for your team, like we were talking about on Coastline, wait for your team to actually clear all that util first. So if, if I, instead of rushing the first 20 seconds, if I come flying up this hatch, if I come flying up this hatch in the last minute and my team's already opened the main breach and my team is pressuring garage and my team's throwing grenades to the floor or ashing out shields or, or, or using all this utility on site, the defender's going to be freaking out. And they're all be focused this way. So if I come in the hatch in the back, then I'm that's when I'm shooting people in the back. That's when I've already used my hard breach tools. That's when that's when maybe I've used my flashes to burn something already so that my teammates can nade stuff. Right? So I, I've helped the team first and then actually using her ability later to go smoke fools, right? And con hatch late in the round probably isn't ideal because it is pretty loud. So maybe you come up um, maybe you come up through the master window or you come up through the gym hatch. This is kind of a bad example for it for this site, but um, say it's say it's it's gym and you you do this. Your team is just pressuring whatever. You, your team has opened up the jacuzzi wall, the windows and stuff. And say you just do this in the last 30 seconds of the round. And you come in like this. And then you're and then you're shooting people in the back because your whole team has pushed them back to this area. So then the defense is just completely pinched. If that makes sense. But you want to be using utility first. The, the main thing about the Amaru point was like, probably don't rush with Amaru. Not all the time, at least. Maybe very occasionally to like take, like very occasionally. Like, I don't know. It, 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 it's high risk mid reward, if, if that makes sense. It's high risk to rush with Amaru and your reward isn't that strong, as strong as you think it is. But if you guys really want to know how to play Amaru the best way, go watch my video. It's It's sick sick af and what i was saying about utility and stuff this is this is my big problem with with ash mains is that picking ash makes zero sense just straight up like ash has two breaching rounds right so she can break two bulletproof pieces of utility finca has two grenades so she can break two pieces of utility with her grenades if she wants but she could also use those grenades to kill people and she has a she has a gone six this thing which means she can actually break three pieces of utility which is more than ash and on top of that that's that's not even including the ability she has which is nuts by the way she can heal the whole team three times and juice them up and make them crazy right so finca just objectively is way better than ash same thing with yana she has two grenades gone six and the clones so both operators are just better than ash and they have better guns. In my opinion, the, the guns are just way better than Ash. So people that pick Ash, I'm just like, bro, like, why are you picking Ash? Why does it make any sense to pick Ash in that situation? But I also have a Finca guide. If you guys do want, you know, if you if you want more Finca tips, like I do have a Finca guide as well. If you guys want to watch it, it's on YouTube, it's on my YouTube channel. But yeah, picking this is this is my problem with Ash mains. It just it doesn't make any sense. Um, in my opinion, if you're picking Ash, you just simply do not understand how impactful utility can be which is what we did talk about earlier in this video. You just got to stop picking Ash. You got if you want to win more and increase your chances of winning more, just you can't play Ash. That's that's the rules. That's the rules, guys. Stop playing Ash. Yeah, so uh if you are playing Ash though, you know, cuz maybe I can't convince you to just stop playing this operator for whatever reason. If you are going to play her, stop just rushing. It's the same problem with as Amaru. Stop just rushing with Ash. Use your breach charges first. Maybe Ash some stuff through the floor. Uh, maybe open like specific lines of sight with your ash charges. Maybe use your breach charges first or claymore. Like use all this utility before you go and die. It's the same thing with playing a hard breacher. You don't rush with a hard breacher because if you die, you lose all your utility. You you can't open the exterior wall if you're dead, right? But as soon as you open all your all your walls, your hatches as a hard breacher, you can run in. You can you can hit the site. You can try to shoot people in the back, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, it's the same thing with ash. It's the same thing with Amaru. It's the same thing with all these operators. Just use your utility before you just go crazy and try and die. Basic competitive tip for you. Also, yeah, Zofia is also a much better option than Ash. She has two stuns and the two impacts. So same amount of clear as Ash, but you can use the stuns to actually burn for yourself. It makes it a lot easier if you have to like clear the ADSs ahead of time. That's a, that's a good point. The last thing we want to talk about is uh, roaming. So utility and how it affects the way you play a roam. So we already talked about utility kind of being like info, right? You can use a shield to have constant info because of the slits and you don't have to peek out for info. You don't have to expose yourself, right? Now let's talk about um, using that utility 
as info while you're roaming. So that way your roams are safer, uh, they're stronger, and they are just better overall. There's multiple different like defenders that are really good for roaming if you're solo queuing because a lot of time you won't have your teammates on the camera like actually helping you with stuff. So using your your shields, proximities, um, alibi prismas, cap can traps, castle barricades, ele mines, thorns, uh, goo mines if you're legion. So using all this, all these things to give you the appropriate info you need to actually make your roam a good one. So with 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 alibi, her prismas are really good set up on like long angles where attackers might not see on their drone and they might pre-fire them. Um, they're really good on windows because you can't shoot them on windows, especially ones that you can't repel. So like this window, an attacker can't repel here. So if I put my prism on it, as an attacker, I can't actually repel up and shoot the base. I can't. So what they have to do is then decide, do I want to jump through this prisma and get pinged? Or do I want to actually waste an explosive to destroy this prisma? Which... If they're wasting explosive, then you're doing your job as a roamer, which is great. So, like on Chalet here, if I put a Prisma on both these windows, they can't repel either of them. They can't shoot the base. And I'm playing in here. Now I know they just can't hop into West Main. Because if they hop in through the West Main windows, they're going to get pinged. And then at least I'll know there's an attacker there, right? So that's the info we're talking about. So maybe I barricade this off. I set up my shield over here. I open the hatch, which this is a pretty common thing I do while I'm solo queuing. And then I'll set up a Prisma here and open this wall. So now if somebody hops in the trophy, and of course I'm not going to put the Prisma here because they can repel and shoot it very easily. So now if they hop in trophy, maybe they come in and they pre-fire this. I'm like, oh, okay, they're in trophy and I can sit beyond my shield, whatever, waste some more time. Maybe I'm just holding kitchen. So I know they can't push into kitchen because I have the shield I can quick peek off, right? Which we talked about shields already. And I can also see West Main from here. So if they come up to the West Main door, like they come up the, the wine stairs, then I can still contest this. I can play around these boxes. I can shoot a couple of drones. And this would be a situation where they are actually trying to clear me. And then I just drop off through the hatch. Now, if they don't clear me on this roam, well, they can't plant anywhere along here because I'm in the hatch contesting it. I can actually kind of hold this door as well. Uh, it's a little harder, but most people try to push in for here for a plant. So as long as I'm alive above, they actually can't get the plant down. So this is a very basic alibi roam that you can use. If I were doing this with like Capcan, I would probably put some Capcan traps on these two doors. So if an attacker comes up to the door, they either hit the trap, which explodes, makes a ton of noise, or they shoot the trap, which you can hear that. This is why I like to run like a suppressor on my secondary because it's more quiet. I'm pretty sure you might actually be able to melee Capcan traps, but I don't think people do that. But anyway. You'll know if an attacker's there because you have the traps for info to watch your back. And then I could play like over here, like watching this or whatever. Or I could put some more traps here and sit like this, watching my West Main. Or go prone under this window, like a weirdo, something like this. And then if they come from over here or they come from over there, I have the cap can traps set up for the info to watch my back as I fight people in this kind of area, right? Or I play here like this, I could test trench. And if I hear them shoot the cap can behind me or hit the cap can, I have this nice little head glitch to watch my back. So maybe that's how you play cap can on it. Um, now you can also use barricades as information as well, right? If I barricade off both these doors, the attacker has to actually punch it and break it, which is very, very loud. And then I don't have to worry about that side. So let's say the site is master, okay? And maybe I'm playing like a mozzie or something. So mozzie doesn't have the info utility right his his pests they trap drones but they don't they don't uh account for any people just walking through them so if i'm mozzie maybe i barricade up this door and shoot a pest on the ground so now i know they can't drone me from this side maybe i maybe i put a pest on this drone hole so i know they can't drone me from there and i put a pest on this drone hole so they can't drone me from the back side so i can then play up like this shoot drones coming in from here shoot drones coming in from here and then i can actually use my nitro underneath later in the round whatever um but this barricade is going to be very important because if I hear someone punch this, I'm like, okay, now I know there's a guy behind me. So I have two options. I fight the guys in front of me or I come up and I try to kill this guy behind me so that way I can safely retreat back here. But I don't want to just let him pinch me. This is also why using utility as an attacker against this stuff is, is really strong because you're 
you're getting rid of the information. The same way we talked about before with the Malusis on coast, and you can use Flores to break the ball. So if, if the attackers clear my shield with a, like a Flores to the drone hole or something, and they clear my Prismas, I then have to worry about West Main. I have to worry about Trophy. I don't have any cover. It makes it way harder for me to safely sit here and actually play this area if all my utility is gone. So as an attacker, taking out the stuff, whether it's with a Twitch drone zapping all the Prismas, or a Flores coming in and breaking the shield, or they actually nade my Prismas or whatever, taking this stuff out as an attacker is what is going to lead you to actually being able to clear this efficiently and effectively. Um, now, of course, they could come in office and open above me. Uh, that is yet to happen. I've ran this strat tons of times and ranked. So, I like, if you see this, maybe just go top floor. Like, if you really want to get that in depth, this is what comp teams do. Comp teams clear this from the very top floor down for that specific reason. It's because you can use this floor to clear out people underneath, which is, is, is a highly underrated way to play, but the people don't really understand that that well. As an attacker, you do want to make sure that you are using your time well. So you don't want to sit outside of trophy for two minutes hoping the guy in here rotates to you because then you have gained no control in that amount of time all the utilities up and you've practically done nothing now if you're an attacker and you clear all this utility and then you wait out here to the last minute maybe you hop in at a minute this guy's staring down the hatch he has no shield he has no way to tell that you've actually done this and then you shoot this guy in the back so that's the difference between sitting out there for two minutes doing nothing or clearing all the utility and then sitting out there to actually make the play to win the round, right? To hop in and kill this guy so that this guy can't stop the plant so that your team can plant so that you win the round. But if you don't have that first step, this guy denies a plant and you lose the round because trying to fight this guy up through the hatch is, is very, very difficult. Now, of course, I could just get smoked on the hatch, but they would have to come into the middle of the open like this as an attacker. If you're coming in through this breach and going like this, the chances are pretty pretty good that the guy on pillar is gonna is gonna fucking roll you but anyway that's that's pretty much it guys that's that's my that's my utility talk for today i uh i hope it made sense i hope you guys maybe learned something but yeah i feel very strongly about the fact that people need to start doing this kind of thing because people just don't i don't know i i, I feel like people have a lot to learn i have a lot to learn you know i've been playing this game forever and i i still have a lot to learn